Hey guys, what's going on? Today I'm going to revisit my Mattel Baby Yoda and I'm going to show you guys how to take a basic Mattel Baby Yoda, put armature inside the Baby Yoda, and I'm going to show you how to add feet and add a sound box to it from the 7 inch speaking Baby Yoda. So if you have the 7 inch squeezable Baby Yoda that came with the frog, which was about $24. I'm going to show you how to take that and Frankenstein it onto your Mattel Baby Yoda. We're going to bust out the airbrush and we're going to paint this guy. And this is how you can end up with a posable, pimped out, painted, dirty Baby Yoda with some feetsies. Let's get started. <laughs> okay. So we're going to kind of break down a little bit what's going on. This is the sound pack that was in the little micro baby Yoda here. As you can see, we've taken him apart. We're going to repurpose him for another project later. We have also stripped the baby Yoda that I want to use. I've decided I want to use my V1. And we've cut a hole and started taking out some of the precious <laughs> fabric and stuffing that's in there to make some room for this so that we could stick it in. I've left a little bit of this so that I could glue it to the outside and make a little bit of a, a pouch. But that's not all we're going to do because we are actually going to go in through the arms and we're actually going to put the armature inside the Baby Yoda. So that is what we're just going to do right now. I'm going to move some of this stuffing out of here because I don't really need it. I can always add the stuffing back in later, so it's better to pull out more than you need, get what you want in there, and then do it. Then we're going to weather the cloak and do some other crap. Um... The other thing that concerns me is that I was worried that maybe these arms were sawed off here a little bit. And Come on, guys, get out of here. My, sorry, my animals are in the way. Uh, but they're not. So the other thing is I've stripped both... Sorry. I've stripped both costumes from Baby Yodas. So the V1 and the V2. I like the V2, but I prefer the lighter paint job on the V1. So we are going to be weathering the V2 and putting it on the V1, uh, which is actually going to be harder than I thought, because <laughs> once I put the armature in, this is not going to go up easy. So that thought has occurred to me. Um, but for now, we're just going to wing it. And if I have to rip it apart and add some attachments, I shall do so. This is the armature that I was using uh, for Baby Yoda. And so I'm going to make the armature the way I want. And I would love to be able to put some up into the head, but it's a solid piece. And there is actually a, a hole in the bottom on the big one, just like the small one, one of these. And it's big enough, I might be able to get some armature in there. So I'm going to experiment first with this. So I'm going to kind of make a rough shape that I know I will be content with for the base, and then I'm going to twine these up, and then I'm going to have each of these going off into the arms separately. So let's see if I can do that. And here I got Harry Potter on in the background because it's... <laughs> one day of the week, so clearly it's a Harry Potter day. Uh, there's always a channel with Viacom running Harry Potter. Which is weird, because it's a Warner Brothers property, and I haven't quite figured that out yet. So, just odd in general, but I'm not going to stuff this in. Let's see if I can get the other one through the other arm. And, you know, you could actually use, like, coat hanger and stuff for this. You don't have to use this guy that I'm using. But I'm kind of curious what it would look like if we go through and do that. All right. So now we've run the wire through the arms. And as you can see, it's a little flopsy. Which I knew it would be because... But it's still poseable. It's not bad. Um, so that's halfway decent. And I believe the hands have holes too. So if I could get coat hanger in there... That would actually be more ideal. So I kind of want to do that. Oh, the other thing that we're doing, which I forgot to mention. We're taking these little feet and we're going to attach them to this Baby Yoda as well. 
uh, just to have them. We're going to do it so it doesn't impact how it stands. So the pram is drying. I just kind of wanted to show you guys a little bit of this process. So you cut the hole in the back and you're going to run the wire in through the arms. And there is a little hole in the hand. So I'm actually going to cut up some coat wire with the appropriate length. So I'm going to have one coat wire that runs the full length arm to arm. Because once I stick it through the hole and get it into the hands, it'll actually hold. It'll actually uh, hold itself. And then I'm going to actually attempt to run a wire up into the base of the head. I'm going to run some excess of it up into the base of the head so that it can bend a little bit. And then run that straight down through the body. And then I'm going to attach the feet down here. So I'm probably going to punch something up through the bean bag, which I'm worried about uh, for obvious reasons. I may actually run that out the back and have it wrap around something like this. So... You run it through the back, out the back, down to the bottom, and then the feet attach down here like a clip-on type situation and hide that under the um, the clothing because I could just cut the stitching in the front on Baby Yoda and then add some Velcro, and that would be just fine. They use a zipper on the sideshow, so I don't see what the big deal is. But i got to cut some more wire. So this is not done, but that's where we're at. Okay. So what we ended up doing was taking that same cable tie I showed in the previous video and running it through the arms. I ran it in through this arm. I wrapped it around the neck, sorry, <laughs> around the neck to create like a shoulder cradle because he doesn't really have good shoulders. And then the other piece ran through here. So what that does is it creates opposability for the child. And he'll retain a rough shape. And now you can see he kind of has a shoulder block now. If I go get the other Baby Yoda, you can kind of see he's a little flopsy in the shoulder region. This guy, we gave a little bit of a bulk uh, just so that the clothing will fit a little better on him. And the, and, you know, and the good thing is you can up the shoulder height. So, uh, but if we turn around and kind of go in here, you can see the armature wire. It's just wrapped around the head. Um, and so I'm pretty happy with that. I've also taken some stuffing back and I've gone in and restuffed the arms because I wasn't really thrilled with how thin they were. So I'm kind of going in with my hands finding the armhole and just kind of bulking them out a little bit. A little synthol for Baby Yoda. You know, get the shoulders bulked. And just sort of push it in with your hands to create a little bit of that, that bulking aspect. So now he's going to have a nice frame and his head's going to sit up a little bit. Um, it also gave me a little bit of limited... Now there's a bit of a shelf here. So with a little bit of cleverness, I can do a bit of posing with the child's head. Not great. What would be ideal is to cut this off, stick a ball armature in it, and create a fully posable system, and then rewrap everything and make foam clay or something, and then put that over that. I may do that, and if I just go on and take wire like this and build a full-on armature. I did go in and try what I said I was going to do, which is run the wire through the hands all the way through, but all that did was create two hands that move simultaneously. They didn't move individually very well and I decided that going with the cable tie was still a better move. Finny, what are you licking? What are you doing? Weirdo. So now the thing is you're going to take a little bit more stuffing, create some space, take the block, the squeezy, and we're going to shove it back in. I'm going to pull out some of the back piece and now And so that is the next phase of this, although I don't really like it facing that way. We're going to flip this 180 degrees. Uh, this is better. So, and then we're just going to glue this down. I'm really just going to use contact cement. I do, it doesn't need to be anything super fancy. Um, I may just even stitch it. I could just go get a needle and thread and stitch the son of a bitch. Um, 
Maybe for now, we'll just use duct tape. What do you think? I think we can just experiment with the duct tape in case I want to change it. Let me grab the old DT. Trusty old DT. Of which you can do no wrong. Duct tape fixes everything. Um, and if I'm happy with it, I'll go in and do something a little bit more permanent. But let's just attempt... to get this set up just a little bit like the way you want. It's all about the seam. So if you get the seam overlapping kind of the way you want, duct tape or no, it'll sit very nicely and you'll be happy. Although I can't find the edge now. Very difficult. I know this is the weirdest build video ever. I apologize. I'm not really trying to be a prick about it. I'm just using what's immediately available to me to make it easier on myself. That's too much Baby Yoda. Save that. The other reason I'm doing this is because... All right, so what now it's, it's all secured. This still zips open, so you can still open this and get the unit out if you need to. Uh, the duct tape is not going to hold long term, obviously, so you do want to stitch it or do adhesive or something. But for a mock-up for right now, it's going to buy me some time. And so he's got the shoulders, he's posable, and I can squeeze him. That's kind of what we wanted for this right now. The next thing is the feet. The feet is kind of a pain in the ass thing. The arms we're going to keep, we're going to use these arms in another project with the head. So I'm just going to, these are all like stitched on and glued and everything and pain. So I'm just going to cut these out for really quick. I just need, I need the feet. So just give me the feet. So Baby Yoda's arms and head from the 7 inch noisemaker. We're going to save for another project. But these feetsies are going to come in super handy because I want Baby Yoda to have feet. And even though these are sized to the 7 inch, they don't really look bad on the 11 inch. They look a little tiny, but you know what? You don't even see them. Just to have them, good enough. So we're actually going to cut this in half. So we have a foot and a foot. And we're just going to kind of figure out, like, what's the best place to put them. Now, I would like to put them on the front bit here for a couple reasons. One, they would stick out just a little bit underneath the cloak. But if you sit them down, Baby Yoda will lean on them, and it'll actually help uh, stabilize it a little bit. Now, there's a couple ways that we can do that. The easiest way would be... Again, fill that with hot glue, stick the armature wire in it, or foam clay if you want, and then cut this off here and shove it into the thing, and then keep a little bit of this fabric, and just glue that sun bitch right on, and call it a day. Uh, and to be honest with you, I'm, it's going to be hard to convince me that there's a better way. Uh, the, the armature will help. So I think that's what we're going to do. I just got to cut a few of these down. And then we'll get my hot glue gun and start heating that up, and we're going to give that a shot. So give me two seconds. Okay. So what we've done is we've gone in and coated a little bit of the fabric with some contact cement, just to create a bond. We've coated some spots on Baby Yoda with some contact cement. We're going to insert it. We've inserted a little bit of wire, and we put some hot glue in there. And now all we're going to do is just shove that sucker in, and then we're going to hot glue it on. So I am going to have to cut a hole for the wire. So be it. I think I want that hole a little lower, actually. We're going to cut this lower. We're going to go here, and we're going to go 
here. For those feet. See how those look at the moment. And before I get in there with the final glue and see what that came out to look like, that's actually not bad. This one need to move over a little bit. Okay, let me go grab the hot glue gun. We will attempt to uh, glue these into place. It was really weak how in movie one Harry Potter somebody cursed his broomstick and he had trouble and then the second movie they cursed a bludger and he had trouble it was such a cop-out it was like can't you just get beat by an older better seeker like wouldn't that have been just fine for everybody like did Harry have to get punked every fucking movie <laughs> And again, hot glue is not the best for this. Um, it's not ideal. By leaps and bounds, it's not ideal. But you start with what you have. And you work with what you got. This is a low-grade DIY Make yourself a better Baby Yoda, because I can't spend $375 on a sideshow. So, well, I could, but I'm not going to. Uh, so you kind of make it, you make it work with what you got. We're going to have to cut away some of that, for sure. I'll bring this over and show you guys what it looked like. And again, this video started... Uh, with me working on the pram and while I'm working on the pram I decided I wanted to work a little bit on on my child here and this is all prototyping right now because I have some aspirations to do a better conversion but I wanted to test out some of the methodologies before I got underway with that. So right now I'm working on this to see how it works. And now I've got some armature in those feet. So that will help me down the line uh, with stability. And we're gonna stand this sucker up and see uh, how wrong I was. <laughs> and see if actually this was a terrible idea or not. Um, I'm just really cutting away excess right now that I really don't think I need. Um, I'm pretty happy with the stuffing level and everything. So, I actually don't need him over here either. Let me just move some of these guys out of here. We've got accessories, we've got Mizzasaur pendants, all kinds of stuff. And eventually we're going to add a, a magnet into that guy too. So let's move Child over to here. So now, Baby Yoda has feet. And so he's got those little guys that stick out. Now... I would ideally like them to sit flush on the ground. Because he's got a bit of a donk a donk And that's going to make them perk up just a little bit. So I would love for the feet to sit flat. But now Baby Yoda's got some tiny feet. Um, I'd like to throw the... I'd like to throw the the clothing right on him, but we can't do that yet because we got to weather that. So next we're going to do that. But this will work for now. This will be okay. These feetsies will do what I want them to do. 
Um, and as you can see, he does sit, which is good. So hopefully that will have the intended look that I wanted. He can't balance completely on the feet. So now he's got a voice box, he's got posable arms, and he's got feet. Let's go ahead and pull out the costume. And in order to do the costume, I'm gonna let this guy sit over here. Sit. Um, I need something to put under this. Uh, where's my Bristol board? That will be ideal for this. Um, yeah. Because... We're not gonna reinvent the wheel here, but... If I'm gonna bust out my airbrush, I don't need to airbrush... Like, my green screen. So we're gonna take out V2. Uh, that's the back, that's the front. And we're mostly gonna stick with the front. This is really all you need, but I'm gonna apply it with an airbrush. So let me go grab my brush. <sighs> Just a basic cake airbrush, a master airbrush, nothing special at all. Very, very normal. Let me see if this has the needle. Yes, it does. This is the one I want. I do actually have a big compressor. Uh, I just don't feel like going to get it. <laughs> so I'm just going to use this for today. Um, and it's a top pot airbrush. And I just need to plug it in. You're going to hear that. It's going to be annoying. I apologize. But it's what I got to do. Oh, I got my BB-8 down here that I need to weather too. Man, what a day. All this crap that I got to do. So here is the best way to, to airbrush this crap on. You pop the top. And this is it. You're literally just going to dump this into the pot. So we're going to turn this on. And test it against my finger here. Now before you start squirting Baby Yoda's coat here, you probably want to test it out. So we got a little bit. So there's the air. As I pull back. You can see ever so slightly that appear. That is exactly what I want. So what we need to do is start with the bottom. Bottom is gross. And there's another thing we're going to use for the bottom. But let's just start with the bottom. And add some dirt. And remember, the closer you get, the more of this shit's gonna show up. So be very particular. And I'm really just looking to... Well, some sweat stains in there. Underneath the armpits a little bit. Right down the edge. Right down the edge. Get these seams a little bit. Get a little bit in there. Oh, big drip. Oh, no. That's unfortunate. The big drip is going to ruin that. Nothing I can do about that. Uh, that's what you get when you don't put your top pot on. So we're going to have to just deal with that. You have to blend it in and make it, make it worse. So that actually might be a deal breaker. I spilled. Um, so I'll go over and get the, the V1 and continue to do what I was doing, but that sucks. <laughs> it happens. Oh, bring this back.
Then you get out of there. And so, as you start to hit it, you create some seams and stuff, but... Um, actually, I think I'm just going to go throw that other one in the wash really quick. And continue to make that one... Uh, work, because that's really the one I want. And I don't want that big stain. So, I'm going to go deal with that, and I'll be back. Thank God for water solubility. So, I really quickly went over, hit it with some Dawn, and, uh... I was able to save it, so we can keep the V2 still going. So yay for Dawn. So Dawn gets a big thumbs up in my book today. Uh, I was able to just really quickly take a sponge, put the Dawn directly on it, or one of those Tide sticks, and just clean it out, then hit it with the, the hot air dryer gun, and make sure that it was all nice and uh, dry. Do it again. Put a towel, and I should mention, I put a microfiber towel under it when I was doing that. To help with absorption and came out great so back to airbrushing so don't remember don't forget sometimes you fuck up <laughs> and you just gotta roll with it so again baby yoda's gotta have some dirt down here now this is not the only weathering we're gonna do to this um i am going to i want this very dirty up around here we're going to be doing a couple layers of dirt. And again, this is subtle. Because like I said, it's very, very light. You can see it there. It doesn't really show up heavily. There's another piece of medium that we are going to be using to help weather. And I really can't give you a tutorial about airbrushing. It's, it is what it is. You just kind of use what you use. You, you got what you got. Uh, I like using the shoe polish in the airbrush because it's already pre-thinned pretty much. So it kind of does a nice covering. Uh, you could put some uh, uh, Windex in there to thin it out if it's really bothersome to you. But the goal is to just get some seams and stuff. So that's really all we're doing is going in into the seams and adding just a little bit of character. And we'll even put some on the back. Because why not? You gotta... You gotta weather the back. Can't just leave it one way. And then I'll run some airbrush cleaner through this when we're done here. How we doing on... What I did was I created a little bit of backflow to get a little bit of the air bubbles going to give me a little bit more flow. Um, I don't airbrush too often. It's not something that I, I, I go to a lot, but it does have its uses. In particular, it's very useful if you're trying to create something subtle. All right, so let's take a quick look at that. Ugh. Model. So, again, very, very subtle dirt. Kind of just gives it a nice little bit like, yes, I do this. I'm actually going to go in and do a little bit around the, the head here because 
his sweaty face would probably make some. And again, this is a, a mini airbrush. This is like for cake tool. This isn't gonna have the power that you want. This isn't gonna have the kind of power that a real compressor is gonna give you. And if you're into airbrushing, do a compressor. Get, get yourself a nice compressor. Now what I'm doing now is I'm just sort of loading and pulling back for a super air spurt to give like dirt spots in certain areas because it would have it. All right, so I'll make it just a little less regular. All right, cool. Now there's another little guy that I like to use and I'm gonna show you. This is uh, And I can even get some black and go in and do a little bit of black, which I might do. Um, but this stuff, this oxidizes with water. This is stuff that you use for photo albums and stuff. I use it on paper aging a ton. We're going to squirt the bottom of Baby Yoda's shit here. Now, I recommend having very good coverage of your area because this shit moves. And, you, and this stains. So you don't want this where you don't want this. <laughs> um... But again, the super cheap shoe polish airbrushes out not too bad, but you can't wash it and you can't get it wet. That's the downside. Uh, you can water down acrylic paint to solve that problem, but let me just... A little bit of that brown on the bottom. And then I'm going to take some of this and we're going to hit... bottom of this a little bit. I want it to look like it got wet mud on it. And we're also going to do the bottom of Baby Yoda's feet for the same reason. And the reason I'm mixing it with some of this spray is because it oxidizes. So when it gets in contact with this crap, it will make a difference. And we're going to do a little bit more let's go ahead and pull that there let's go ahead and pull that there and once again we're going to hit the front low 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 I'm going to attempt to hit a little bit of the sleeve, so I'm going to get just outside where I'm spritzing. All right. The result is a very dirty Baby Yoda situation. Now. Like I said, we are going to do Baby Yoda's feet, because that needs to be dirty too. We're probably going to do that with brown acrylic, because um, that's just easier. So the next step is to put this on Baby Yoda. That is easier said than done with what we've now done to Baby Yoda. So I'm going to do that off camera. This I recommend you throw away. But this is again, this is called Distress Oxide Spray. You can get it at Michael's. Uh, it's a nice little bit. I highly recommend them. These I could probably recycle and do something else with, so we're not going to trash them, but. All right. And so that is really the quick DIY on how to pimp out your Mattel baby Yoda while I'm waiting to finish the pram video. So what you're essentially looking at is the same thing. A Mattel Baby Yoda, we cut open the back, cut up the voice box and the voice box holder from the body of the 7 inch one that has the press and play. We put that in and then we took the feet from the 7 incher and threw those on just so that Baby Yoda has some little toes poking out the bottom. It adds a little bit of height but not much. It's still about 13 inches. So 
This now gives us the ability to... We also ran armature through the arms so that we have fully posable arms. We bulked them out for the shoulders a little bit. And we've gone in and done a little bit of a custom paint job on the little guy with the airbrush tool just to kind of create some dirt and some grime and some sweat. And he looks really pretty. <laughs> and he looks really cute. And, you know, now he can do the force. And so the feet just poke out, which is all we wanted. You could buy 3D printed feet if you want. You can have somebody buy the pants that attaches them. Doing it my way only gives you the ability to have it sit. It's going to require a little bit of adjustment, um, some weighting. Obviously, with the way I did it, Currently, I have to bend some wire that I put in there because the feet don't sit 100% flat, but we did makeshift Jones with this thing. This was not designed <laughs> to be uh, a life-altering situation. Um, and then, of course, if you get the one that came from uh, Costco, it came with a bowl. It came with these accessories. We could actually have him hold this bowl now if we wanted. Uh, I'm going to lose that ball. It's going to roll right off. That's actually a circle, which I love, but damn thing's going to fall right off. And now the armature is inside the arm, so it won't poke through with my original cheap mod that I showed everybody. Um, so if we just kind of work this a little bit, he could sort of hold this a little. And you can set this up and pose it that way so he'll hold it. It's going to be a little trickier with the way I did it. If you use better armature, it'll probably hold it better. Um, and then, of course, if you have the 7-inch, you can have him hold like little accessories like the frog, uh, which I liked. And then you just got to throw on his Mythosaur pendant. And then this is your pimped out Mattel posable Baby Yoda. And all it took was a little shoe polish. Um... Two figures combined into one figure and that little bit of armature that I showed you in my original mod of this. Uh, I did take a V1 paint job, removed the V1 cloak, which is lighter, which I started airbrushing when you saw me screw up. <laughs> and I swapped in a V2 coat, which I like a lot better. I prefer the, the, the less green. Uh, we may flock this, add some hair. Uh, we may not. I don't know. I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Um, I'm even considering repainting the face a little bit, adding some more details, things like that. But I really just kind of wanted to get this mod done. And with the airbrush, the subtlety, you won't see it on camera so much, but when I take photos, it will show up. And it's just adorable. And so Baby Yoda is all set. That's how you get a talking Mattel Baby Yoda. And it just... It does so much for so little, you know, 20 bucks plus a couple other little bits and mods, but look at his little feet. I mean, you can't even tell they're the seven inch feet with the way they're set up. It's just fantastic. Love it to death. Hope you guys enjoyed this. The pram is coming. Um, I've been filming the pram over several days and I'm not done yet because I'm not happy with it yet. It's not going to be exact, but it'll look good. And again, that's really for the seven inch other Baby Yoda. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention was save your arms and head from your 7-inch because I'm going to show you how to use other doll parts to make custom Baby Yodas that look like other genres. So that's going to be fun too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this a lot. Uh, hopefully you attempt some of this like I did. Uh, again, that stuff isn't even stitched in in the back. It's held on with duct tape right now just because it's so makeshift. But once you put the thing over it, you can't even really tell. I mean, and I still have the ability to go in, access the duct tape, and pull out the speaker box, because that still separates. It's still Velcroed in, so I can still get in there and get to the voice box. So, this is, uh, in my opinion, this is, you're not getting a sideshow, you're not dropping 375. That's, this is as good as it gets right here, man. You just get the Yoda that you want and make that mod, and I think it's totally worthy. You gotta paint his toenails. But, and we got to put some brown on the bottom of the feet and stuff, make his feet dirty. 
So we got to hit that with some paint, and I will do that at some point when I start painting the whole face and everything a little differently. Um, but yeah, I recommend it. Thanks for uh, checking it out. Hopefully this half hour plus of your life has not been a waste. I got to really figure out the balance on this. So I may reposition the feet and reheat the hot glue and move them again. But um, I'm really happy with it, and I hope you are too.